Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to the painting channel. Now I'm told spring is in the air so I felt that it'd be very nice to do you some spring lambs and I'm going to do this in gouache so let's roll that intro. Let's see how it turns out. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back. Now as I said just now, I'm going to be doing these two lovely spring lambs. I took the photograph a few years ago on a farm very close to where I lived and the whole paddock was full of young lambs, different black faced ones and various markings, but they were all enjoying the spring morning. Very warm day and jumping up and down, having fun, playing with each other and probably annoying their parents as well. But I felt that as I'm told spring is in the air, it doesn't feel much like it to be fair, but I'm assured that it's just around the corner. I felt that it'd be really nice to do a couple of spring lambs and I also wanted to bring you a painting in gouache. So I felt that this was a perfect opportunity just to do a gouache as well as some spring lambs in season. So without further ado, let's go on and let's see how it all turns out. Hey okay, everybody, welcome back. And I'm just getting the final parts of this little sketch of two lambs, two lovely spring lambs ready for you. I did the drawing or most of the drawing and setting up before I started filming, purely and simply that the drawing has taken quite a while. And I did not really want to take too much of the video time out in completing this section of it. So, the line art for this will be over on my Patreon, so feel free to pop over there and uh, download that and uh, have a go at this one and see how you get on. Love to see your versions of it over on our uh, Painting with Paul Apps page over on Facebook and uh, see how you get on with it. But as I say, that you don't need to be a patron to download the reference to this, just download it and have a go at it. There's a couple of little numbers on the back here. I just want to get those in. Number eight, I believe, I think, or, or double zero. I don't quite see what it is. There's one on this little lamb as well. Just put that on there like that so I don't forget them. Okay, so I think we're pretty much set to go then. Now the gouache palette that I'm using is one that has been left to dry normally in as much as they're in open pans. And I have two palettes on the go. In fact, I have a third one ready to go as well. But I'm just testing the way that the gouache works. I've read and seen an awful lot of people who sort of uh, extol the virtues of keeping it wet, moist and what have you. And I don't feel, in all honesty, that that is always the best way to go because you are keeping it permanently damp and you do set up the chance of mold and other things coming into it. I've seen the same with uh, acrylics over the years and it can cause you a problem. But I'm not saying it's a right or a wrong way of doing things. I'm just saying that I'm testing this way, which is the way I used to do it, where I had open pans and they dried and I sort of sprayed them up and got them ready to go. And that's what I've been doing with this pan. And so far, I'm quite happy with the way it's gone. I've got no mold issues and the paints quite easily reactivate. So I'm gonna get a spray bottle and just get those going and we carry on. Okay, so the brushes that I've got, I've got an assortment uh, that I have been buying up a few of Rosemary's of late and I'm going to actually steal one of these for my watercolour set. I just wanted to have a nice 
um, synthetic just to do some nice points on my watercolor. So I'm going to take one of those away and that will relieve the pressure on some of these. But I've got a very, very nice set of um, brushes here and I'm going to be using maybe a small flat and maybe a medium flat. This is not a very large painting. It is a one eighth um, imperial. So that is taking a full sheet of full imperial watercolor paper and cutting it down into quarters and then halving those quarters. And that's the result. That's what we end up with this size here. And all I've done is use a little bit of washi tape just to mask off and give myself a lovely clean edge. Okay, I'm taking quite a, an assortment of brushes out. I'm probably not gonna use all of these. I probably will use the detail one and I probably will use that lovely dagger. I love the dagger shape and the round. Thing, but... All right, so. Let's get going. And first things first, I'm put in a bit of a wash. I'm gonna use some of these darker colors that reignite some of these, put some dark blacks in, maybe a little bit of uh, warmth in the form of some sienna. I just want to come in with a bit of a wash over some of these on this background. It's gonna be predominantly dark, but I want to get this color in to start with. Put it in yet but this is just a very basic green fairly light and from that we can go lighter or darker i'm just going to put that in again i'm just taking out the white paper at this stage setting up the values now the idea of sort of blocking in with most artists whether it's um, oil watercolor doesn't matter, doesn't matter the medium because the idea transcends all mediums. And that is to take the whiteness away because you judge your tones and values of what you're painting based on what is surrounding the subject matter. In other words, the white here may be different if I left everything white around it, I will paint them darker. But because I've painted the dark and I've set up the painting, I'm putting this color in again, I'm setting up the color values. Then I judge the white and the tones of the white uh, accordingly, because now they're being affected by these darker colors and these other colors set around them. So it's a, it's a case of creating a situation where you can judge your pigmentation, your, your tonality of your painting according to uh, the area and color and tone of that color, the strength of that color, the warm, the cools of that color set around your subject matter. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Okay, I think that's nicely dried off. Now, the idea here, it's thin, and you can see through the translucency of the pigment, and it's not that solid flat color that one associates with some gouache painting. That doesn't matter to me. I'm not really looking for that thick opacity, that matteness. Yes, it's gonna come, and the more I layer, like here, it's going to be that flat color. But looking into this, I can see how it may suggest other forms to me in the background. We've got a dark mass. We're going to have some nettles and things going on. Which There's a lot of white in there. Let's come away from too much of that opacity. A bit more of the green. A bit more of that green. Maybe a little red. A little orangey red in there. Just to take that green back and cool it down a little bit. Because we're just putting some very subtle cool greens in to suggest. Now it's very, very bright. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna put a bit of darker uh, reds in there from some burnt sienna. Come back in with a bit more of that green there. Darken it down. Got a little bit too white. I forgot there's a lump of white under there. 
and I was putting a little too much in. Okay, I think that's pretty much done the background as we feel we can't, you know, I don't think there's any need to go much further with that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in with using some of this white up and using some of this lovely red color. This is a light red. And I'm just going to come in with a very, no, that's a little, got too much blue in that. So it's a bit more red into that just want to bring a bit of warmth into these labs. Now there is a cast shadow there which we mustn't lose. I'm not going to go too mad with it, just a little bit there would be sufficient, I think. And I'm going to pick some of that up and I'm going to add to it a little touch of this yellow, a little bit of Indian yellow colour, maybe a little bit more fluid. The trouble with white, don't make it too wet because it will lose power to cover any area if you make it too wet. I'm just going to come in and just going to probably just put a little bit of information. Again, if it's incorrect overall, I can change it later.
Okay, so now I'm coming down and I'm working this quarter inch dagger and I'm also using a small, and it's like a, um, a bit of a rigger, but it's slightly less than a full rigger. And it's quite a nice shape. It's just a round and it's a series 315 from Rosemary as all, all the brushes are from Rosemary. And this is just a very fine detail brush which we can use for some of the areas around the nose and places like that if we feel the need to. Okay, I'm gonna come back in now and I'm gonna continue with the white, but I wanna put a touch of blueness, some of this lovely blue that's a residue from a previous work. I'm gonna bring some of that in, and just tap some of that cool color into the back of our lambs, even a little cooler than that. So I'm gonna come in with some ultramarine blue into that. That will give me that subtle blue-violet color. And I pick up a little bit of dark now with that blue. So we've got a very cool but darker blue value. Just gonna pop in here now with some of these more shadowy parts under the ear through the back there. I haven't done anything on this feather yet. So let's come in, let's quickly put in that dark. Now the nose on this is in more light. So we've got just the nasal passage there. And we're gonna put that lovely bit of eye in. It's almost, you can see and just look, I think my eye shape is a little wrong. Let's just bring that down a little there. Just look, you can see it's almost like lapping it up, loving the morning, loving the heat. And let's put a bit of dark down through there through to the mouth and there's a little dark dirt underneath the mouth into the muzzle there. All right, let's just look at that for a minute before we carry on. And I'm gonna come back in with a small brush again. I'm just gonna pop in some more white values and I'm gonna bring in some whites around other areas. Now that's too much water and now I could see that and now I've just put some dark on there because I've got dirty fingers and I'm not taking enough care. So let's just come back in, wait for that area to dry. Let's work somewhere else for a minute.
Okay, well, I'm going to leave those there. I think we've really done them to death now for the time being. What I'm going to do is come back in with some green values now. I'm going to pick it up and we're going to add some your lovely yellows and brighter green colors. I'm going to mix into certain areas here with some of these greens that we've had going from before. And I'm going to add in some lights to some. That's very cool. Don't like cold. We're going to warm that up with some yellow ochre colour, some Jean Blien, something like that, just to add in a little bit of light into some of that. Now, I think that's quite a light, bright colour, but it's probably a little bit premature. So let's come in with some of that phthalo green. Let's just make a mid-tone value up with some of these lemony yellows that we got here, cadmium yellow mixes, and let's just cool some of that down, test that there. That's still very, very bright, more green more cad yellow mix, fresh green. Now let's temper that down with a little bit of this old blue. Mix some of that in. And if you've got a gray you're looking for, then come in. That's too much, but you get the idea. You can temper that red into the green because they're complementaries. They will sort of really much annihilate each other. But let's come back in. They're very similar to where I was. So it's a case of keep mixing till we get it where we want it. Let's try that again. There we are. Now we have a mid green, which is little less is more. I'm going to use it to isolate parts, things like the nose there. And I want to put a bit of light down there as well, but just isolate. And every bit of information you put in now is less than what you did originally, because you need to see the variation. You need to see the darks and you still need to see all the mid greens or the darker greens, as well as the dark values right at the back of it all and then you're going to put in these and then you're going to come back in with a few highlighted versions. Okay, now I'm going to come in with some lighter values. I just want to put in a few sort of grassy bits behind these. And I'm not drawing grass everywhere. I'm just suggesting little taps of information that could well be grasses that are coming down towards and around their feet. I'm going to work straight through the area here as well. We've got our dirt on here and I'm going to work into those areas some of these lighter statements. Now you could use a big broad brush and make this very, very different. I'm using it in this way, quite like these ideas of understated shapes and forms through our dirt, as it were, in places, picking up some darker bits here coming through the area. And some of them all come over the top of our little lambs like this, because obviously they're part of this and the grasses will be through them and around them as it were. Puts them in context with the surrounding. Make a little darker mix here. A little bit more yellow, a little bit of red in there just to smash that green apart, make it a little warmer. And you're gonna nice darker values into some of these areas as well.
again, we're using darks and lights. We're using our mid-tone that we put on to begin with to suggest what it is, a mid-tone, nothing more. And that is like the backing, as it were, of our grasses. Again, we're going to bring some of those off and on the bottom of the page so they look as though they are continuing on in the foreground, right up toward us. A little bit of mist paint through there. Okay, so now let's look at some lighter values. Let's bring in a little fresher lemony yellow. Let's just pop in one or two lights to some of that. Less is more now. So we're going to put them in and we're going to leave them at that. But we're just putting a few less marks in. We're just allowing the brain to pick up some of these highlighted ones in the whole scheme of it. And they will then suggest the highlights and not obliterate everything else. anything at all probably but then I can come back and change that uh, at a later stage but I'm quite happy with what we've got there and it says as he does a little bit more bring that little bit of shape there the scene okay so I'm going to sign this now and call it a day all right let's just put a signature down here out the way sorted okay so one picture of two spring lambs i hope you've enjoyed it and i do hope you have a go at this one by going on to my patreon and checking out the reference there and downloading it and have a go okay everybody i had a whole lot of fun painting this little pair of lambs today and enjoyed myself working in gouache too i'm sure you guys got something from the process as well to take on in your own painting now the reference for this, as always, will be over on my Patreon, along with the line art. Now, if you want to go over there, you do not need to be a patron to download it, but just download it and use it and put your versions over on the Painting with Paul Apps page over on Facebook. Ask to join it and you'll be admitted, of course, and love to see how you get on with this one. And don't forget, while you're over on the Patreon, there is so much there on offer and many of the videos now are fully exclusive for a minimum of six months and probably a lot longer than that. And so you get exclusive content and that is something extra and above that I've been doing in the past. So it's well worth looking and if you want to get involved, I'd love to welcome you on as my latest patron. Now with that all said, don't forget there is also my Sky course. It's All the details are listed underneath this and other videos. If you want to check that out, it's only £67 right now and you can get involved with that and uh, get a whole seven hours plus of content and learn how to paint skies in watercolor. And I'd love to see you on that course and help you out further down the road. With that all said and done, I'm now gonna get ready for a new painting and a new tutorial. So I'm gonna look forward to seeing each and every one of you next week. Take care, stay safe wherever you are, and moreover, enjoy your painting. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.